Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Also hit the bell so you're notified when I make new videos. Thank you! Today I want to talk about coax, your transmission line, and how that affects the power from your radio to the antenna. So I've got a few different types of coax and a few different lengths. Uh, I've got a 100 foot roll of RG213, a 50 foot roll of RG8X, a 100 foot roll of RG58U, and about a 120 foot roll of RG8X. What sparked this was I, I was building this. This antenna right here, this is a roll-up J-pole uh, that I was hoping I uh, could use on 2 meters and 70 centimeters. And while, yes, technically I can, when I was testing it, it looked really, really good on the analyzer. The catch was, though, I was using this length of coax, which is 50 feet of RG8X, and what looked really good on the analyzer in reality was actually really terrible once I put a radio on it because basically all my power was being lost especially on 70 centimeters in this coax so I want to run through the different lengths of coax I'm going to start with a short length of RG213 and RG8X as kind of a control and we're going to take a look on a watt meter going into a dummy load uh, at what the power is going into the watt meter with a short length of coax and then we're going to compare that to longer lengths of coax. Now keep in mind this is not a very scientific test. There's literally books written on all of the different factors that are going to come into play uh, between matching your transmission line and your antenna and power is not the end-all be-all to getting your signal out. Doubling your power does not double your distance at all. But this is something to consider because I actually sent one of these antennas to a fellow out in California. After I sent this to him, I got to thinking, hmm, because I told him, use some good coax. And I got to thinking, well, how much are we really losing when because we want to get this antenna up in the air but how much are we losing if you're going to use a lighter weight rg8x coax you get it up in the air higher sure that's great but we're losing a lot of power with this transmission line so that's what sparked this and uh obviously antenna 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 matters more than power Especially if you have a gain antenna, that's how you can gain some of this back. But I thought it was really interesting, and I've, I've read a lot about, you know, the losses in dB between these two coaxes at different frequencies. But I've never put them on a meter, and I've never even seen a video on what we're about to see. So uh, stay tuned, and let's dive into this. Okay, so here's a look at the two main coaxes that we're going to be using. This top fatter one here is RG213, and this bottom one is RG8X. So just to show you a size comparison, uh, significantly different. The RG213 is about a half inch thick, where the RG8X is about a quarter inch thick. So as kind of our control, I'm going to do uh, a short run. These are both about nine feet each. The first one, this is RG213 that's hooked up. And then we'll switch to another approximately nine foot length of RG8X. So we've got our TYT TH8600 going into the watt meter and then into a dummy load. So let's key up on 146. And we can see about 19 and a half. Sometimes it'll peak to about 20, but that's about where we're at on VHF. Switching over to UHF. We get about 16 and a half watts. Now here is about nine feet of RG8X, 146 megahertz. We're gonna key up. We're about 18 and a half watts there. So we've already lost a watt. 
and on UHF we're also at about 16 watts so we lost about a quarter of a watt there connected now is a 50 foot length of some generic RG8X I got off of Amazon uh, when I first got my technician license this was actually the first bit of coax that I bought so on VHF 146 we were at 18.8 uh, .8 watts with 9 feet of RG8X. Now we're at 6.7-ish. Lots of power lost. And here's a look at UHF. We were getting 16.1 with our shorter length. Now look at that, 1.6 watts. Almost all of our power that we're putting out is being eaten up by the coax. Now I do not have a 50 foot run of RG213, so I'm gonna jump right up to my 100 foot run of RG213. We're gonna take a look at VHF first. So we're 11.9 watts versus the 6.7 watts we were getting with half the length of RG8X. So we've doubled the length with RG213 and we've only lost, we were at 19.5 watts, now we're at 11.9. So not even half of our power has been lost. We lost about two thirds of the power with our G8X. Now we'll go to UHF. Our RG8X was at 1.6 watts. Now we're at 6.2 with double the length of a better coax. Up next, we have a roughly 100 foot length of RG58U. This is a bit of coax that I take very often when I'm doing portable HF work. That's a different story. On VHF, UHF, I'm curious what the result's gonna be. About five and a half watts on VHF. It's actually not much worse than the RG8X at a 50 foot run. So this might be a little bit better. Uh, and on UHF, we're 1.9. So this is actually a little bit better. A 100 foot roll of RG58U is actually a little bit better than a 50 foot roll of RG8X. So now we'll take a look at approximately 120 feet of RG8X. On 146, we're getting uh, about seven and a quarter watts. And on UHF, uh, about 2.65. So now I want to run the same test, but on the HF bands. I'm only going to test 40 and 20, just because those are the primary bands that I work on. No other reason than that. So you can see I have my ASU 891. The HF power is at 100 watts, and I'm on CW mode. And I'm just going to do the center of the band on both. So there's 40 meters, there's 20 meters and we'll see what that gets us. So here is nine feet of RG213. I've got the power meter set, we're at 100 watts, and you can see we're getting 100 watts out of the radio. The meter says 107, and on 20 meters, uh, about 105. Now we have our nine feet of RG8X on 40 meters. Let's key that up. Same 107 watts on 40. And 104, we had 105 on 20 last time, so not, uh, not really a big deal. And here is our 100 feet of RG213 on 40 meters. 96 and a half watts. And 20 meters, about 90.6. Now here's our non-branded Amazon 50 foot length of RG8X. And we're getting about 86 watts on 40 meters. And about 78.7 on 20 meters. Here's our 100 feet of RG58U. 40 meters, about 84.7. And 20 meters, about 75.2. Here's our 120-ish foot length of RG8X on 40 meters. Uh, about 88 and a half. And on 20 about 80. So let's take a look at the numbers. So for RG213 on VHF and UHF, with a 100 foot length of coax, 
we're only seeing about 61% of that power getting to the antenna. And on UHF, it's even less. We're only getting about 37%. Now, when we go down to RG8X, the losses are even greater. We're seeing only 39% of the power is getting to the antenna on 2 meters. And on 70 centimeters, only 16.5% of that uh, 16 watts that we initially saw. But really, the radio is putting out 20. Uh, we're only getting 16% of that power to the antenna. So that's quite a bit of loss. Now, looking at HF, obviously, these cables are going to be a lot less lossy on these frequencies. Uh, they're just, this coax doesn't have nearly as much loss. So uh, with the RG213 on 40 meters, we're seeing 90% of that radiated power getting to the antenna. And on 20 meters, about 86% of it. And looking at the 8X, we're seeing about 82% on 40 meters versus 76% on uh, 20 meters. Now, the 50-foot length of RG8X, I'm going to kind of disregard here because that's kind of an off-brand Amazon cable. All of my other coax cable is tram, uh, and it's interesting that we're seeing only we're seeing more power radiated at the antenna with a hundred foot length of good coax versus a 50 foot length of eh, not so good coax. So, uh, and then comparing the RG 58 U uh, a little bit more lossy on VHF and UHF and uh, only slightly more lossy on the HF bands. So that's just a little visual plot of all the different coaxes and the different frequencies. Obviously, this is not a uh, end-all be-all of tests. Uh, I wish I had some different 50-foot lengths of these so we could kind of have a full uh, graph here. But hey, this is uh, we're amateurs here. So that's my little experiment, guys. Uh, I thought that was pretty interesting to see. Obviously, as we all know, like I said earlier, power does not mean you get farther necessarily. Again, doubling your power doesn't mean you get double the distance. Having your power doesn't mean you get half the distance. But it's still interesting to know when you're setting up uh, your station, especially for VHF and UHF, there's some severe uh, feed line losses going through there. So, uh, you know, 20 watts out, especially on VHF, uh, you could have. 85% of your power is being absorbed in the transmission line. So uh, if you have just a pretty much a, a zero gain antenna up, you're not going to get out as far. But that's where you can get into antennas, and we'll leave that subject for another day, but that's where you could look into a gain antenna. Like I have a 17-foot antenna out back uh, that gives, I think, like 10 dB of gain uh, on 2 meters and I think 7.7 .7 on 70 centimeters. So that's how you can get that power back. But this all started because I built this antenna and I'm keying up with my 5 watt HT, it's a really 4 watt HT, and I'm not hitting 70 centimeter repeaters that are 10 miles away from me because I'm using 50 feet of coax and uh, there's probably maybe a quarter of a watt getting out to the antenna, so that's lower than FRS radio power, so. Yeah, just food for thought. So anyway, I wanted to share what I learned with you guys because I didn't know that. And I'm sure there's probably a lot of other people that didn't either. So there's a lot of things to consider when setting up your station and antennas and coax and things. And everything plays off of one another. There's always a compromise to be made somewhere. So by doing these experiments, we learn and we can maybe learn how to more efficiently get our station set up. So thanks so much for watching another episode of K&M Radio Stuff. 73 guys.